Plants grow just about everywhere on Earth. You'll find plants in gardens, farms, and forests. Plants grow on mountains, in deserts, in water, and in your backyard, too. Hi, I'm Max Orbit, and I am ready to explore the fascinating world of plants, trees, flowers, fruits, and much more. Let's go! Plants are very important to people. People could not survive without plants. People use plants every day for all kinds of things. People use plants for food. We get the food from farms and gardens. Tomatoes, apples, corn, and wheat are all plants. Trees are plants, too. We harvest trees to get wood. Wood is used to help build houses, furniture, and a lot of other things. People grow cotton plants. Lots of clothes are made from cotton. People use plants to make medicines. Aloe cream comes from an aloe plant. Plants are a very important part of our lives. Botanists, the scientists who study plants, have named and described over a half million different kinds of plants. And they estimate that there are still another half million kinds of plants that they haven't even discovered yet. Plants come in different shapes and sizes, but they have some things that are the same. One thing that most plants have in common is that they are green. Another is that they are all connected to the ground in some way. Also, plants make their own food. Plants have similar parts, too. The first part of the plant we're going to look at is called the root. The root of a plant performs very important functions. Roots anchor or secure the plant in the soil. Roots also draw water and minerals from the soil the plant needs to make food. Roots also serve as places for the plant to store food. Plants have root hairs. Root hairs are important because they allow the plant to make more contact with the soil. Osmosis is the passage of the nutrients from the soil to the root. Root hairs give the plant the ability to increase the amount of water and nutrients it can take in. Okay, now it's time to play that totally green test your bean game show. Know your plants. See if you know the correct answer. Question one. Plants are important to people because they provide us with A. Food B. Medicine C. Clothing D. Shelter or E. All of the above The correct answer is E. Plants provide us with food, medicine, clothing, and shelter. Here's question number two. Roots are very important to plants. Roots A. Anchor the plant to the ground B. Draw water and minerals from the soil. C. Provide shelter to the plant. D. All of the above. Or E. A and B. The correct answer is... E. Roots anchor the plant to the ground and draw water and minerals from the soil. Here's question number three. The process by which nutrients pass from the soil to the root hairs is called... A. Eating B. Cosmetology C. Osmosis or D. Fibromatosis The correct answer is C. The process by which nutrients pass from the soil to the root hairs is called osmosis. Thanks for playing Know Your Plants! We all need support, and plants need support, too. The part of the plant that gives support is called the stem. It's also important for other reasons, too. Stems look different from one plant to the other, but all stems provide support for the plant. In addition, the water and nutrients taken in by the roots are then transported to the rest of the plant through the stem. Stems come in a variety of different forms. For example, a tree trunk and shrubs have a woody stem. Most of the kinds of flowers you know have upright stems. Some stems are called climbing stems, like you would find on vines. Some stems extend underneath the ground. 
Tubers are underground stems. A good example of tubers are potatoes. Some stems run along the ground. They're called runners. The stem holds the buds, branches, leaves, flowers, and fruit of the plants. The next part of the plant we're going to discuss is the leaves. There are two kinds of leaves. Some leaves are narrow and look like needles. Other leaves are flat and wide. All leaves have little tubes running through them. They're called xylem. Xylem carry water from the stem. The most important function of leaves is to make food for the plant. The process of making food is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes place inside the leaves. A key ingredient in photosynthesis is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll gives leaves their green color. Chlorophyll also captures energy from sunlight. Each leaf takes energy from the sunlight, mixes it with water and the carbon dioxide absorbed by the plant to manufacture food the plant needs to live. Those foods are sugars, starches, and fats. Photosynthesis has a byproduct, oxygen. Oxygen is what people and animals need to breathe. That's why without plants, life on Earth would be impossible. Now it's time to play another round of Know Your Plants. Here's question one. Underground stems are called A, trunks, B, tubers, C, pipes, D, none of the above. The correct answer is B. Underground stems are called tubers. Here's question two. All leaves have tiny tubes running through them. The tubes are called A. Xylophones. B. X-rays. C. Xylem. Or D. Straws. The correct answer is C. All leaves have tiny tubes running through them. The tubes are called xylem. Here's question number three. An important byproduct of photosynthesis is A, oxygen, B, water, C, carbon dioxide, D, all of the above. The correct answer is A. An important byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. Hey, let's talk about flowers. Plants have flowers, and most of the time they're easy to locate on a plant. They're usually the bright, colorful parts of the plant. Let's take a closer look. The part that surrounds the flower as it grows is called the sepal. The sepal has two jobs. The first job is to protect the flower bud before it opens. After the flower blooms, the sepal supports the flower. The most colorful part of the flower is the petal. All the petals together are called the corolla. Little stalks that stick up within the flower are called the stamen. The stamen produces and holds little grains of golden dust called pollen. Pollen contains cells that are needed to reproduce or make new flowering plants. The pistil of the flower is also needed in the plant's reproduction process. For flowering plants to reproduce, the pollen from the stamens must travel to the pistil. When the pollen arrives and sticks to the pistil, we call that process pollination. Sometimes insects help in pollination. Here's how it works. The color, smell, and sweet nectar from the flowers attract the insects to the flower. Pollen from the flower stamen is picked up by hairs on the insect's body. When the insect flies to another flower, some of the pollen rubs off from the insect and onto the pistil. Another way pollination occurs is by wind. Lots of times the pollen grains are tiny and light, and the wind can easily carry them from the stamens to the pistils. Some birds also help in the pollination process. Once the pollen grains stick to the pistil, a pollen tube begins to form. The pollen tube extends down to the ovary. In the ovary, we find the ovules. Ovules develop into seeds after they are fertilized. After fertilization, the petals of the flower dry out and fall off. They're not needed anymore. And then the ovary transforms into a fruit. Fruit surrounds and protects the seeds. 
The next time you eat certain fruits or vegetables, you can check out the seeds inside. The seeds contain the young plant that allows the plant to reproduce. Let's play another round of Know Your Plants. Here's question one. The sepal is a part of a plant that A, protects the flower bud as it grows, B, supports the flower after it blooms, C, provides entertainment, or D, both A and B. The correct answer is D. The sepal is part of the plant that protects the flower bud as it grows and supports the flower after it blooms. Here's question two. Little grains of gold dust called pollen, A, are responsible for photosynthesis, B, contain cells that are needed to reproduce or make new flowering plants, C, contain chemicals that give plants their green color, or D, none of the above. The correct answer is B. Little grains of gold dust called pollen contain cells that are needed to reproduce or make new flowering plants. Question number three. The petal is the most colorful part of the flower. All the petals together are called A, the pistil, B, the stamen, C, the sepal, or D, the corolla. The correct answer is D. All the petals together are called the corolla. Some plants don't have flowers. They form seeds inside of cones. Pine trees and fir trees are two kinds of plants that have cones and not flowers. At first, cones are shut tight until the seeds have developed. Then the cone opens, allowing the seeds to fall to the ground so they can begin to grow. Seeds come in all shapes, colors, and sizes, but every seed is made up of three parts. The first part of a seed is called the seed coat. The seed coat protects the other parts of the seed from injury, insects, and loss of water. The seed coat gives the parts inside the seed a chance to survive until the conditions are just right to start a new plant. Inside the seed coat is the second part of the seed called the embryo. The embryo contains all the parts that are needed to become a new plant. The third part of a seed is its stored food. Stored food is used by the embryo when it begins to grow. When a plant embryo begins to grow, we say that the plant is germinating. Germination is the beginning of the growth of a plant embryo. For germination to happen, there needs to be the right amount of water, the right temperature, and enough oxygen. Many seeds germinate in the spring because the temperature of the ground and air are warmer. Some plant life cycles can be one year. Other plants can live for many, many years. No matter how long their life cycle, all seed plants go through the cycle of germination, plant growth, seed formation, and scattering. Let's play another round of Know Your Plants. Question one. Every seed is made up of three parts. They are A, the seed coat, B, the embryo, C, stored food, or D, all of the above? The correct answer is D. Every seed is made up of three parts. They are the seed coat, the embryo, and stored food. Here's question number two. Germination is the beginning of the growth of A, plant diseases, B, a plant embryo, C, plant colonization, or D, all of the above? The correct answer is B. Germination is the beginning of the growth of a plant embryo. Here's question number three. Some plants grow seeds inside of A, cones, B, stems, C, bees, or D, hair follicles. The correct answer is A. Some plants grow seeds inside of cones. Well, there you have it. 
Plants, they are a very important part of our life. They provide us with food, medicines, and raw materials to make things. Plants also make the world a more beautiful place to live. Plants are way cool.